back. Welcome back after the break. Uh, just before we went for our break, we were looking at uh, uh, the pre-existence of Jesus Christ. We're trying to prove uh, that Christ uh, is God. And how do we uh, prove that he is God? We prove that uh, he was pre-existent. That means, uh, you know, there was not a time when he was uh did not exist or cease to exist. There was he was all he always was. He always is. He will always be, and that is why he is God. Uh, and we are just proving from Scripture that he is pre-existence. And by proving that uh, Christ is pre-existent, we're proving that he is God. And um, also trying to prove that you know there was not a time when he was born into this world. Uh, that was, you know, a time when he was um, born as a human being, uh, when God became man, but uh, he was fully God, fully man. Uh, he is God. Uh, and to prove that he is God, we are proving that he is a uh, pre-existent. Okay. And we're looking at uh, some scripture passages. Uh, we're looking at John chapter 1, verses uh, 1 to 4. We also looked at uh, John chapter 1, verse 14, and Revelation chapter 19, verse 13. Uh, and uh, we are trying to understand why the Apostle John uh, is introducing Jesus uh, as the Logos and trying to say that the Logos, uh, uh, you know, uh, is God uh, and that he was with God. Why can't he just say that, you know, in the beginning was Jesus Christ? Why does he introduce Jesus Christ as the Logos? So we saw that, um, you know, um, uh, in the historical Jewish setting, uh, this word logos had a very rich meaning and uh, the, the readers, the Jewish lead, uh, readers who are going to read uh, uh, Paul's writing, uh, sorry, uh, John's writing, uh, would understand uh, this word logos because, um, you know, uh, they also knew the logos was somebody who was, uh, who was this power, this creative word of God uh, that brought things into existence, uh, uh, that which they, they know from the Old Testament. Uh, it was this uh, powerful creative word of God in the Old Testament by which the heavens and the earth were created, uh, Psalms chapter 33, verse 6. And also um, they understood this Logos as uh, uh, someone who was an organizing or a unifying principle of the universe, uh, you know, who, who held things uh, together. And um, hence, when John is trying to introduce Jesus as the Logos in terms that uh, the Jewish readers, in their own understanding, their own mindset of, of what this word uh, Logos was and the rich uh, you know, uh, meaning that it had, uh, he's introducing Jesus as the um, Logos, so that it made sense to them, uh, to, both to the Jews and to the Greek uh, thinking and their uh, mindset. Okay, so with this uh, Jewish background, uh, you know, we now gain an insight into uh, the significance of uh, why the Apostle John used or introduced Jesus as the uh, Logos, because Logos at uh, the time when he was writing seemed to have this huge, uh, uh, enormous, uh, significant uh, uh, significance attached to it. So this word Logos had uh, had something uh, uh, was something that was a huge, enormous significance uh, that was attached to it, and hence he introduces uh, Jesus as the uh, Logos. But you know, uh, even as um, Apostle John introduces uh, Jesus as a Logos, he makes it clear that this Logos is not just a guiding a reason or a principle of the mind or someone who is an intermediary between God and the human race or God and the universe or God and his creation, but, you know, he's introducing this Logos as uh, God. So he's saying, yes, you know, maybe you have this understanding of this Logos, uh, who is a guiding reason or a principle in the mind, uh, or an intermediary between God and the human race. But this Logos is not just that he is 
uh, God. So he is introducing uh, this logos with, you know, and uh, ascribing four important attributes. Uh, the first thing uh, we read in John chapter one, uh, verse one, was the logos was in the beginning. You know, the word was in the uh, beginning, which means uh, indicates that you know Jesus Christ uh, existed. Uh, you know, not only when he came into this world or he was born into this world, but he existed even before time began or he existed before all time. He was not just uh, in the beginning, but also he was not just from the beginning, but he was also in the beginning. So when we say that, you know, uh, Jesus was from the beginning, that means there was a time when he began to exist. But when we say that he was also in the beginning, which means that he existed even before the beginning and he was there in the beginning. So he was not just from the beginning, but he was also in the beginning and he had his being uh, before the beginning. He had his being before time began. And hence, we can say that there was never a time when he was not there will never be a time when he will uh, cease to exist. He always was, uh, and he always is, and will always be. He will. He never began. There was never a time when he began, and therefore he is uh, forever. He is ever lasting. So that is the meaning of that uh, phrase. Uh, well, the first attribute that John is declaring of this Logos by proving that, hey, he is God. He is not just an intermediary between God, a man and God. He's not just a principle or a guiding reason, but he is God because he was there, uh, you know, also in the beginning. Okay. And the second attribute that John is introducing this Logos as, who he refers to as Jesus Christ, he said, the word was with God. That means Jesus was ever with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. Um, please turn to John chapter 1 verse 18. Can one of you please read John chapter 1 verse 18 please? Anyone? John chapter 1 verse 18. No one has ever seen God, but God the one and only who is at the Father's side has made him known. Thank you. So here in uh, the NKJV version, it says, No one has ever seen God at any time. The only begotten Son who is in the bosom uh, of the Father, he has declared him. So no one knows the Father, but who has revealed it to us? It is the Son who has revealed it to us. And the Son is uh, was in the bosom of the Father, which the, the word bosom uh, here refers to somebody who is very intimate, or one, so you know, uh, or one with that person. Uh, you know, a, a, a child, when a child is born, a child is very young and small, the mother's always holding the child in its bosom. Okay, it is a very intimate, close, connect relationship. Uh, so here it means that he was intimately one with the father. That's perfect unity and oneness with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. So the word was with. Uh, God and the third attribute uh, that uh, 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 Apostle John is introducing the Logos to his readers is the word was God. So the word was in the beginning. Okay, the word was with God, and then he's coming to say that this word, this Logos, Jesus Christ, is God. So here we see that Jesus was God. He possessed the essence. Uh, basically the essence and the substance of everything that made God God or who God is when we're talking about essence we mean essence means the nature or the characteristics so Jesus Christ had the essence of God means he had the nature the characteristics so the, what is the nature of God anyone knows what's the nature of God What is God's nature? What is the nature that makes God God? He's holy, okay. 
he's the beginning and the end. Okay, thank you, Jackin. He's uh, the basic nature uh, or the characteristic of, uh, 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 of what makes God uh, God is like Princess omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent, uh, eternal, and sovereign. These are the basic core uh, nature uh, of God that makes him God, that he is omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient, uh, eternal, uh, and a sovereign. Okay, so uh, so Jesus had uh, the essence, which means the nature or the characteristic uh, of uh, God, which also means that he had, uh, you know, his being, his very life form, his uh, his person, who he is as an individual, you know, is that of God, had the nature, the characteristics of God. And the word substance, you know, is the Greek word homo, uh, homo eusios, uh, uh, which is which mean is the same as being or same in ex uh, essence. Uh, so the word essence and substance, uh, the Greek word homo eusios is basically talking about essence, the nature, the characteristic, the same in being as God. You know, God has a specific being. He's a uh, the same being uh, Jesus Christ had. Uh, so when we talk about essence and substance, these are uh, synonyms you know, which we can use um, are interrelated words. Uh, so, you know, Jesus uh, had the same essence or the same substance that made God, God. So this Logos uh, was not an intermediary creature between God and man. Uh, but he, the Logos, is God himself. He is not somebody who is a mediator, somebody who is a lesser being, a lower being, uh, uh, intermediary being, but uh, this Logos is God himself. If you look at uh, Psalms chapter 90, verse 2, can one of you please read Psalms chapter 90, 90, verse 2, please? It just highlights an important attribute of God. Before the mountains were born, before you gave birth to the earth and the world, from the beginning to the end, or to end, you are God. Thank you. It says, um, uh, you know, before the mountains were brought forth, or ever, uh, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, uh, you are God. So God is everlasting. Uh, he is always there. He will always be. Uh, he's everlasting God. And, uh, you know, same with Jesus because he's God. He's pre-existent. Um, and, you know, he existed even uh, before time uh, began. So God is God from everlasting to everlasting. He transcends time. Uh, you know, um, therefore, when we say that the word was God, uh, we understand that God was from everlasting, which means he was from eternity past and will be to everlasting. When we say everlasting, to everlasting. So to everlasting means eternity future. Okay, so he was from eternity past and he is uh, in it, he will be there or he will continue to exist till eternity uh, future. Okay, so Jesus is God. Uh, he is from everlasting to everlasting, uh, which means the Logos was uh, from, from everlasting, eternity past, and will be to everlasting, which means will be to eternity future. And the last attribute that uh, Apostle John, or uh, one of the attributes uh, in uh, verse 1, uh, the fourth one uh, that he introduces the Logos as, he says, in him was life. Okay, in him... Uh, was life. Now, if you look at this, uh, the Greek word uh, for this word life, uh, the Greek word is um, uh, zoe, um, and you know it's 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 talking about uh, and this word when it's used in the New Testament is referring to spiritual life, uh, and especially when you're talking about spiritual life, it's referring to eternal life uh, that comes from God through faith in Jesus. Uh, uh, Christ. So when we look at this word Zoe, it uh, it also means, uh, you know, it means uh, spiritual life, especially eternal life, but it also is referring to the life that God has in himself, or it's talking about uh, 
the life that God is giving to us, the fullness of life, the God kind of life that he is uh, giving to us. So we uh, will receive an insight about what uh, the Zoe is. Uh, uh, let's look at John chapter 5, verse 26. So can you please turn in your Bibles to John chapter 5, verse 26. It gives us an insight into what Zoe is. Can one of you read that, please? For as the father has life in himself, so he has granted the son also to have life in himself. Thank you, Anand. So if you read this in the Greek, he said it will say, For as the father has Zoe in himself, so he has granted the son to have Zoe in himself. So it's uh, the Zoe is the life that God has in himself, which means it's talking about, uh, you know, that the, the life that God has in himself is self-existent life, it's a self-sustained life, uh, it's an eternal life. Uh, self-existent means he does not depend on anything else for his uh, existence. Uh, self-sustained, you know, uh, he does not need to depend on anything. Uh, uh, you know, he uh, life is just sustained in himself and uh, it is self-sustaining, self-existent and it is eternal. Uh, the life that God has in himself. So here we see that the father has the Zoe life and he has granted the son to have life in himself. So he's granted the son to have the Zoe uh, life. So the Zoe life is the God, the God kind of life or the life that God has in himself. Uh, God is um, self-existent. He does not depend on um, uh, anything else, no outward source for his continuity, for his life. Uh, but we are, uh, you know, we are uh, dependent. We are not self-existent. Uh, we depend on uh, uh, the atmosphere. We depend on oxygen. We depend on air. We uh, depend on uh, the sunlight uh, and uh, other things that, uh, you know, is required for our existence. And so Zoe is, uh, you know, the self-existent, self-sustaining and eternal uh, life of uh, God. So therefore, you know, when he says that in, in him was life, in him was Zoe, the Logos was, had uh, Zoe in himself, you know, he's saying that this Logos, Jesus Christ, is self-existent, is self-sustained, and is eternal, which means he is from eternity past to eternity future uh, because he has Zoe in him. He has the life of God in in him and hence he is uh, God. So, uh, and it also, uh, uh, scripture also reveals to us that, you know, uh, that Jesus uh, does not just have the Zoe in himself, but in fact, he is Zoe. Okay, John chapter 14, verse 6, a very famous uh, scripture. Uh, can anyone uh, read that, please? John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus answered them, I am the truth and the way. Go ahead, Nikhil. Okay, thank you. So, John Jesus chapter 14, verse 6. I am the way. Yes, read it, read it. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except Jesus. Thank you. So here we see that uh, Jesus did not just have the Zoe in himself, but in fact, he is Zoe. That means he is life. Uh, how do we know this? Uh, because Jesus himself made this declaration of him of who he is. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So if you read this in, look at this uh, verse in, um, in, 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 um, in, in, um, Greek, this uh, the life there, the English word life there is talking about is the word zoe. So Jesus has, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the zoe life in, in him and he is uh, life. Okay, so these are the four important attributes whom uh, John declares. Uh, and by declaring this, he's basically defining two 
uh, his audience, uh, the Jewish readers, uh, or the, even the people, the Greek or the Gentiles uh, readers, who this Logos is and uh, who he's presenting this Logos as. He's presenting this Logos as Jesus. Um, and this Jesus, he says, this word was from in the beginning, the word was with God, the word was God, and he has life in himself, and he is Zoe, he is life. Okay, so before we move on, anyone has any questions? Any questions? Okay, so we look at uh, how this pre-existent Christ, uh, you know, what is his nature and attributes. We look at the nature and the attributes of the pre-existent Christ. Uh, so we look at uh, Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 7. Can uh, uh, one of you read this, please? Very important passage of scripture, Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 7. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in likeness of men. Thank you. So it's a very important passage of scripture regarding uh, Jesus, his humanity, his deity, uh, you know, and there are a few important facts that we can uh, draw out from this passage uh, concerning uh, the pre-existence of Christ. And we'll be looking at this in detail even as we uh, study the humanity of uh, Jesus Christ. But here we're going to be basically looking at uh, Christ's uh, pre-existence, uh, what we can, uh, you know, draw some important facts from this scripture passage, that Jesus was in the form Two things that we can uh, draw from this uh, uh, passage or two important facts from this passage is that Jesus was in the form of God and he was equal with God. Okay, so two important things. Jesus was in the form of God and equal with God. So the Greek word for form is morphe, which means uh, nature. So Jesus had the nature of God in himself. We, we looked at what is the meaning of uh, what nature God has. Okay, so Jesus had the nature of God and he was equal with uh, God. Okay, so two things. Uh, he had the nature of God, of the form of God, and he was equal uh, with God. If you look at, uh, if you read this um, uh, passage, uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 6, uh, the, the first uh, part of it from the Amplified Bible, it says, who although being essentially one with God and in the form of God, that is possessing the fullness of the attributes which make God God, which means that Jesus had the full, he possessed, he had the uh, full attributes which make God God. If you look at this uh, same passage, uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 6, the first part of it, in the New International Version, he says, who being in very nature God. Okay, that's not use the word form, but it says, who being in the very nature God. God. That means he had uh, the very being, the nature of God, uh, uh, the fullness of the attributes uh, of that make God God, you know, Jesus possessed in him uh, self. But we should not mistake this word form that we read, you know, who being in the form of God, when we're talking about form, we're not just talking about a form in terms of an outward appearance. Uh, but when we're talking about form, the Greek word has a deeper and a more richer uh, meaning to it. We are basically talking about uh, his essence. You know, when we're talking about essence, we're talking about his nature, his attributes, his characteristic. So Jesus had uh, you know, uh, uh, he possessed the full uh, fullness of the attributes which make God God. You know, he had the very nature of God himself. Uh, and also we see that Jesus uh, eternally, you know, existed as God and was equal with God the Father. Jesus possessed the fullness of the divine qualities which make God God 
uh, which also implies to us or proves to us his pre-existence. So um, if anyone asks you, you know, how can you say from script, how can you prove that Jesus is God? You can talk about John chapter 1 verses 1 to 4, John chapter uh, 1 verse uh, uh, 14, and also you can... Uh, you know, talk about uh, or show them, refer them to Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 7, where it talks about Jesus having the form of God or the nature of God, and also he was equal uh, with God. Okay. Uh, Colossians is another passage of scripture that we can look at. Colossians chapter 1, verse 17. Uh, can one of you read, please read Colossians chapter 1, verse 17, please? And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. Okay, thank you. He was before all things, and in and all things consist or exist, uh, which all which proves to us that he was before all things means he was always there. He always existed, uh, and he is self-existent. Uh, okay, he is self-existent, um, and even Jesus, you know. Um, uh, uh, tells us that he is or proves to us or gives us a hint that you know he uh, was pre-existent he existed before all things um in john chapter 8 verse 58 or in john chapter 8 we read that you know um uh you know jesus telling his jewish opponents can we just turn to john chapter 8 please all of us john chapter 8 Okay, John chapter 8, uh, verse 58. Can some one of you read that? Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Okay, thank you. So here we see that, uh, you know, uh, 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 yeah, Jesus saying in verse 56, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and was glad. So he's he's talking here about my is, you know, Jesus referring to himself because a capital M. And then the Jews said to him, verse 57, uh, you are not yet 50 years old and have you seen uh, Abraham? Okay, so Jesus is trying to tell them that even before Abraham was, you know, came into existence or during Abraham's days and time, he was uh, uh, there. So he, they say, are you, you, you are not yet 50 years old and have you seen uh, Abraham? Okay, so here is a sufficient response to prove that Jesus' eternity, you know, uh, that he was uh, pre-existent, that he existed from everlasting to everlasting. And then he goes on to make this very bold statement uh, in John chapter 8, verse 58. He says, truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, uh, I am. Okay, now... Um, you know, uh, the Jews knew this 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 phrase, uh, I am. And, uh, you know, remember where this word I am comes in the Bible? Exodus one more time. Yes. Thank you. Uh, in Exodus chapter 3, verses 13 to 14, uh, you know, when God asked Moses to go uh, to uh, Egypt and to deliver his uh, people, uh, you know, um, and he says, uh, when you go to the children of Israel, you have to tell them that the God of your fathers uh, has sent me to you. And they, and when they ask him, you know, uh, so Moses says, okay, when they ask me, what is uh, your name? What shall I say to them? And God tells Moses, I am who I am. Um, am so here you know this uh this this title i am who i am or this title i am you see here is also written in cap in, in capital letters i am uh it was uh, for the jewish uh, readers the jewish 
uh, people, uh, they attributed this, uh, this uh, title of I am only to Yahweh, only to God. And, um, and here when Jesus, you know, is saying that before Abraham was I am, uh, he's repeating the very words that God used uh, to identify himself to. Uh, Moses as I am who I am Exodus 3 verse 14 so Jesus is also claiming for himself this title I am uh, by which you know uh, 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 God is basically uh, revealing himself uh, or designating himself as the eternal one uh, who is self-existent who self-sustained uh, the all-powerful one uh, when he reveals uh, his name as I am who I am and Jesus is also ascribing or using or claiming this title for himself as uh, uh, the I am so uh, this word I am was something that was uh, 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 you know uh, uh, in Jewish heritage was attributed only to God himself to Yah Yahweh himself so by using this title Jesus uh, God was telling Moses, you know, uh, uh, you know, there is no beginning to me. You know, I am eternal. I am self-existent one, uh, uh, the God who is the source of uh, His own existence and who always has been and always will be. So, um, uh, when the Jews heard this, you know, uh, uh, from the mouth of Jesus, it was something which, which was very unusual for them to hear it by saying Jesus saying that I am. You know, uh, you know, uh, using this title or uh, introducing himself or ascribing himself or claiming himself to be God, uh, and this was something that was a very solemn statement for a, a solemn statement uh, for the Jewish uh, people because it was ascribed only to uh, God. And here was uh, Jesus claiming uh, himself to be a God, and we know what was the reaction of the people. John chapter eight was fifty nine. You know, they took up stones, threw uh, at Jesus. Uh, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the uh, temple. So we see that Jesus himself, uh, by making the statement before Abraham was, I am, he was declaring himself as God, uh, declaring equality with uh, God himself. Okay. Uh, a few more scripture passages that talks about um, Jesus as the pre-existent one, the pre-existent God. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 to 4. Can one of you please read that? Brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all of our fathers were under a cloud, all passed through the sea. All were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that the rock was Christ. Thank you. So here Paul writing to the church at Corinth, you know, he's uh, uh, giving reference to uh, ex uh, to what was written in Exodus, you know, uh, where uh, God led the people of Israel out of Egypt uh, to the desert, uh, to the promised land. You know, he led them um, uh, through the Red Sea. He parted the waters for them, Exodus chapter 14. Uh, he was a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire fire by night so that you know people have shade during the day uh, and uh, you know they're able to see things to the night and just receive warmth from that fire uh, he also you know fed them uh, manna from heaven exodus chapter 16 he provided them uh, in two occasions uh, you know water from the rock exodus chapter 17 numbers chapter 20 uh, so here you know paul is uh, saying in first corinthians chapter 10 that that rock was christ the rock from which they drank that water was christ which means that jesus himself was with the people as they passed through the wilderness god's presence very presence was with them as they uh, you know as they were led uh, from uh, egypt to the promised land uh, god was with them and it was jesus who himself was with his people as they passed through uh, the wilderness. So it again points out to the pre-existence of Christ um, um, 
that it was not only at his birth that you know ha that he had his beginning uh, in this uh, in this world or he had a beginning in time uh, it was simply his incarnation where it was god taking on human form when he was born into this world but you know he uh, is pre-existent he was pre-existent he existed even before uh, time even uh, began and he also we look at uh, two more passages uh, which talks about his origins uh, from dateless eternity micah chapter 5 verse 2 can one of you read that please micah chapter 5 verse 2 uh, talking about um, the prophecy concerning the birth of the Messiah, birth of Jesus Christ. My Micah chapter 5 verse 2 reads, But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth are from of old, from everlasting. Thank you. So here is uh, the prophecy concerning uh, the Messiah, and it's talking about uh, the one who's going forth are from old, from uh, everlasting, which means that, you know, uh, the origin of the Messiah is of old, from eternity past. Uh, so it shows that Jesus always existed in eternity past eternity past and he was pre-existent he was uh he is everlasting from eternity past to eternity future another scripture passage uh which is talking about the pre-existence of uh, jesus christ matthew chapter 2 verses 1 to 6 can one of you please read that now after jesus was born in bethlehem of judea in the days of Herod, the king before wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod, the king, heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all, the chief priests and scribes of the people together he inquired of them where the christ was to be born so they said to him in bethlehem of judea with us it is written by the prophet but you bethlehem in the land of judah are not the least among the ruler of judah for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people israel Thank you. So here we see that, um, you know, the, uh, the wise men, um, they come searching for uh, Jesus and, uh, you know, they don't know where to go. They come to the palace thinking he's, you know, uh, the king will be born in a palace. And, uh, you know, when they, they reveal this to Herod that, you know, there is a king that is born because they've seen a star, they've come to worship him. Uh, Herod was troubled and uh, he calls all the chief priests and the scribes and inquire where this Christ uh, was to be born. And, uh, you know, based on uh, uh, the scrolls that they had, the Old Testament uh, 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 prophecies that they had, you know, they were able to say where he was born. He was born, he's going to be born in Bethlehem. Uh, and uh, we see that the prophecies that were revealed long time ago, you know, many, many thousands of years back, uh, we see that exactly coming into fulfillment and Jesus was born in um, Bethlehem. So, you know, it was not just that um, his, uh, his, his beginning of, you know, of him being born on this earth, uh, of God becoming man was something that was, uh, you know, something that was, um, that came in the heart or the mind of God, uh, you know, all of a sudden, but something that was pre-planned uh, even before the foundations of the world, even before, uh, uh, you know, God created the world, even before he created Adam and Eve, even before Adam and Eve sinned, uh, Jesus had, uh, uh, God had in his mind the plan of redemption. And he all, also has seen, it was a completed done thing, the plan of redemption was also completed done thing in the mind and in the heart uh, of God even before 
uh, the foundations of the world were created uh, or the world was created or even before he laid the foundations of the world it the, the work of redemption was already a completed done thing in the heart and mind of uh, god so here we see that you know uh, jesus had uh, his origins from dateless eternity uh, from eternity past and he exists to eternity future okay so this is uh, very briefly about uh, the looking at a few scripture passages that talk about the pre-existence of uh, jesus christ any questions anyone has any doubts any anything that you'd like to say anything you want me to uh, you know again uh, explain to you all No questions? You all understood everything? Okay, uh, these are very important scripture passages, so I would like you all to, you know, it's a very short chapter as well. I would like you all to just take, it will just hardly take you uh, an hour or half an hour to just, you know, go back and uh, look at these because this is very foundation uh, to our faith, to our belief. Uh, it's also as students of theology, it's important for you to know these scripture scriptures uh, to be able to explain it uh, to people of different faith when they ask you to, uh, you know, it was Jesus, is Jesus God? Or to also people in the church, uh, you know, have a doubt, is Jesus God? You know, these scripture passages are very important. So it's important for you to just go through John chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. John chapter 1 was 14 uh, and also Philippians chapter 2 um, verses 5 to 7 and Colossians 1 17 um, and uh, you know Jesus himself is ascribing himself as God attributing the name of I am in John chapter 8 was 58 uh, important to look at all of these scripture passages just uh, kind of get a hold of what it says so that uh, you are able to understand yourself and you know you'll be able to explain it to others okay so if there are no questions then uh, we'll move on to chapter two we move on to chapter two or we just have yeah could i Could, could I make a comment there? Yes, please. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm really grateful for, for this course because on Sunday, um, we, we have our family worship here and my daughter who's 14 said, uh, we were sharing some scriptures and I showed how um, God, God is, is king. So, uh, a, um, Jesus is king servant man and god and 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 this like <laughs> this overlaps like this this confirms what we were sharing and in my when we were looking at scriptures my my daughter said mom i i did realize that jesus was in the old testament and in the new testament and i'm like now you understand and we'll we'll see more of that you know in the following week this week and so this this is like um what will I say? This is God speaking to me that what I'm teaching my children um, is helping us and helping my children as well as, as uh, young teenagers and they're learning to be mission-minded to, to be able to explain this. And this is the reason why I, I enroll for, for this because there is clarity and I can teach. It's right teaching and right believing that um, Jesus is God and you will see the beginning. And if we can show them scriptures, you know, to you know to prove that or to explain that to others who ask them, uh, this will really give, give big confidence to our children, you know, to stand up for for Jesus because they can point to scripture. So I'm really grateful. I'm really truly grateful. Thank you. Thank you, Maggie. Thank you for sharing, and it's a joy to have you back in our class. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> I am too. And hello to everyone. I'm from Papua New Guinea, <laughs> out here in the Pacific. Yes. Maggie was a student, uh, I think two years back she joined uh, when I was mm -hmm. teaching them in the first years. And uh, yeah, she was not able to continue, but has now joined back. So it's good to have you, Maggie. Anyone else? So, uh, thank you. Yes, nice to see you, Maggie. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else has any questions? Anything you'd like to share? Yeah, even I too was wondering about the course as to what we are going to study. But then, even the first um, session was something. A lot of learning, especially that Jesus was with the people as they passed through wilderness. That I've never seen that from that perspective. So it is, it is so much of a learn, and it's something new. Thank you. Thank you, Jackin. Anyone else? You explained it oh. so well. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it's, uh, any, for, yeah. for me, it's like, it's really very like, I, I'm out of words because uh, till now only one uh, scripture that I know like to, uh, uh, like to tell that Jesus is there even in the before is like only John 1-1. One, one. But it's like very eye-opening uh, when we are studying all these scriptures and how they are pointing to God pointing to Jesus that he is the God from the beginning. It's like really new learning for me. Thank you. Thank you, Prince. Anyone else has uh, any any questions anyone else has? No questions? Okay, uh, I think we'll end class if uh, there are no questions. Okay, and uh, I'll see you all uh, next week. Thank you for joining class. Have a blessed day and a, a blessed week ahead. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. God bless. Bye. Thank you.